Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I will be showing you my first game of the War of the Ring 2021 tournament. So I already have the game loaded, and you can see that I started with a pretty nice roll here, three Wills of the West and a Palantir, and my opponent started with four eyes. So normally I'm reluctant to give a Elven Ring so early in the game. I'm playing free people, but given this start, it seems worth it to get Aragorn turn one. So that's what I do. I first, I separate Aragorn and Boromir because I have House of Stewards in hand, which allows me to recruit a unit in Gondor. So my opponent musters Isengard to war, which is predictable. I continue to move. Oh, and I didn't quite remember this. I also sent Legolas along. So Legolas came along to help in the defense of Lorien and also give me the option to muster the elves with any die. Now this is particularly interesting. My opponent did not use that muster die to get Saruman. So clearly Saruman typically would be a better uh, choice, but maybe he's planning on using the ring that I'm about to give him to also muster Saruman. Um, but he moves, he moves Nazgul. So I think that this is probably, first of all, we should get Saruman. And second of all, uh, if we're going to move Nazgul this early in the game, um, I, I think it's better to probably get this army moving in Berdur or uh, maybe this Dual Golder army moving. There are a lot of other things that I think are are possible. So I think that was a little bit of an, an inefficient start for him. To be fair, he only had three dice, but, but still, I, I don't think it's worth spending the character die in that way so early on. All right, so I get this. I will go alone. It would have been great if I had that last turn, but still, it's, a good, it's certainly a good start for, for the free people player, which is me. And he allocates an eye, and we draw more cards. Let me see if I can get his password. I think I wrote it down. I think it's one captain. So we can see. Viewed the shadow hand. Yes. So there we go. So we can see we can see the shadow has uh, Palantir early. So candles of corpses, new powers rising. Good, reasonable, good starts. Good cards at the beginning. All right, so. Uh, one eye. This time he gets a much more reasonable uh, roll, fewer eyes, and I get a whole bunch of a whole bunch of musters. That gives me a lot of flexibility. So I don't know exactly what's best here in this situation. What I should be what I should be thinking about. Um, clearly the fellowship's going to move, but what are the other things that I should be doing with these? It seems like um, getting perhaps. Uh, Rohan could could be mustered up. Um, I do have these two, uh, several army musters, so I have a lot of flexibility about where to move armies around. We'll see what I end up doing. So he brings in Saruman. That's good. And I muster Gondor toward war. So good, I guess, to get to get Gondor to war. I can defend Minas Tirith quite strongly. Let's see what he does. Pits of Mordor. Fair enough. Let's see where he puts them. So he gets Dol Guldur and Moria quite ready. That's good. So he used an elven ring to do that. Maybe I missed that. So he used an elven ring. I'm not sure that it's worth it to use that elven ring so early on. I think the elven ring gives you a lot of flexibility. And I'm not sure that I would do it just to play that card. He has uh, three cards in hand, so or four cards in hand. He wasn't at risk of discarding it. He could save it for later. I guess these armies are going to start moving around, but I think there are plenty of armies that could still be moved without the need for doing that quite so early. All right, so I move the fellowship and the fellowship is safe. 
Makes sense. These armies move. Now, I'm not sure why we leave two, two armies here. I mean, the elves are pretty far from war. I guess that matches this. these six units plus these four units do make ten. But I guess my inclination would be to leave only one and one. Um, that's probably how I would do it. All right, so I've gotten Gondor to war with two musters, and now I have I have two more musters to use. So he's brought in some armies to attack Osgiliath, and um, then I retreat them back to Minas Tirith. And clearly, I'm not I'm not particularly worried about worried about this. One of the drawbacks of using the muster the way he did is that because I've brought Gondor to war and he attacked me bringing Gondor to war also, um, it seemed like that was part of his plan, uh, he could have mustered the Witch King this turn had, if he had saved one muster. So I think it's worth prioritizing getting action dice um, very highly. This army attacking in Osgiliath, it's fine. I mean, it's certainly good to occupy Osgiliath. Maybe he has other cards that's going to bring these armies in. I think getting getting this Bear Dur army into the game is is quite useful. And if he has Bear Musters, you know, getting getting these South Round Easterlings are, are good. If I'm if I have Boromir and Aragorn in Minas Tirith, I'm not sure how productive. If that's the most efficient place for him to attack, there might be other. Uh, weaker targets that I might consider going for. Lorien makes sense, um, particularly since they're not they're not at war yet and pretty far from war. All right, so uh, he continues to prepare around Lorien. I think it makes sense to bring in all of these people to have a full stack of ten, and not just stop at um, eight. I think it's going to be. I mean, he probably can take it, but I don't see why not bring bring some extra people. All right, sorry about that zoom. All right, here we go. Uh, let me just set the, the zoom level. I think 130 was about right. Okay, so let's continue. I muster again in Minas Tirith. While, while I have them at war, I think that makes sense. I do wonder if I should have prioritized getting these Edoras units into Helm's Deep while I had two army movements. I could. I could bring this Iron Hills Dwarf in. Um, that that could be useful. Maybe I should have done that instead of getting Gondor to war so quickly. Um, but I got some more units on the board, so that's not bad. All right, so he attacks Lorien. That makes sense. And so what did he draw? He drew Shadow Lengthen, so that's going to be useful to him. And um, I got... Three day and a night in the throw and sting, not particularly useful at this point in the game. But I still have plenty of other playable cards. All right, he doesn't roll any extra eyes, and I got some good movement, so that's great. These are, I think, good rolls for both of us. He should definitely get the Witch King with one of these musters, and he can start to chip away at Lorien. I go ahead and play Riders of the Eden first while I still have Gandalf as the guide, so I can redraw and get Book of Marzable. So this is, um, this is useful. I can think about bringing in, um, bringing in Gandalf if he dies off. I can bring in Gandalf uh, back up here and then, and then bring the dwarves to war. He doesn't seem to be making a lot of motions towards the north. Palantir of Orthanc. So obviously my plan up until this point had been to get Gandalf but he only has one eye. And so my chances of him hitting the fellowship and then me being able to kill off Gandalf are relatively low. And he has two Palantirs right now. So I think it's probably worth it for me to uh, take care of the Palantir. And I do. So I sort of admit to myself, okay, I'm not getting Gandalf this round. Um, it's worth it to clear the Palantir. So I do. <clears throat> he plays New Powers Rising. That makes sense. Great early muster card, and then he's attacking Lorien. I try and fight back, and we see how this battle goes. He presses. I'm not sure if it's worth the press, but he does. And was there... I didn't see. Maybe there was a battle card that he played there. So he didn't, he didn't play any card.
All right, no card. All right, fair enough. All right, so let's continue with the battle. He rolls well on the second round, and I also roll well. We inflict a lot of damage on each other. Legolas manages to hold on with the elves close enough. All right, uh, the elves are getting closer to war, and again, he gets the Witch King. That's, that's obviously good. And I move the Fellowship. He misses, and he gets an elite in Moria. He's planning on bringing it in to reinforce Lorien. I think that makes sense. Um, you know, maybe the only other idea is to consider bringing in more um, in Isengard. You know, probably uh, four units against one. Four units can inflict one casualty, but it's probably probably safer to, to do it the way he did. Given that he's planning on moving this army in Moria to Lorien, I'm not sure why not just muster the Witch King in Moria. And then I get him involved in this battle, and then I can use his card drawing ability in my battle in Lorien. I move the Fellowship again. They get hit. And obviously getting hit on the third, um, on the third movement is always a little sad for the Fellowship, because then it increases the cost of going through Moria by a lot, potentially two extra tiles. And let's see if I get revealed. And I do get revealed. So this one reveal is really a particularly... Uh, bothersome result from this hunt. Um, the odds of getting revealed there are quite low. It was only a one-third chance of getting hit, and then the hunt pool was, you know, maybe slightly better than 50-50, so it's only about a one-in-six chance of getting revealed on that third movement, um, but that's a big, that's, that's a pretty big swing, and I don't think it makes sense to reveal into Moria. Um, I thought hard about losing Gandalf there, but um, Gandalf just it felt like it wasn't worth losing him to a one corruption. Better to save it for later. So he brings in his army. He's going to go ahead and um, defeat Lorien, and then he's getting ready to do this big attack in um, in Rohan. And and I'm I'm wondering ah maybe I could have gotten maybe I could have gotten these armies in. That might have been that might have been wise to make Helm's Deep harder to take. All right, so I go ahead and muster because I need to muster uh, usefully. So I muster more in Minas Tirith and one in Pilar gear. And then um, he's attacking in Lorien and defeats it. Makes sense. So Legolas, I don't know, m maybe would have been better to keep him in the Fellowship. Did he really help that much? Uh, pro probably some. It, uh, Shadow did have to reinforce, so... Okay, so what do I get? I have uh, seven cards now. It, it's always useful to think about what what would you end up discarding if this is if this is your situation. Um, I just drew uh, the reinforcement for Lorien, but this daylight battle effect is quite strong. Um, clearly, I have some military options, so I feel inclined to try and keep through a day and a night. Mithra Coat and Sting and Bilbo Song are probably the two most powerful healing effects. Maybe it's worth it to get rid of I Will Go Alone, though I'm definitely thinking about bringing um, like Gimli maybe out of the Fellowship or a Hobbit out of the Fellowship to get to Erebor to be able to use the book. So in the end, I end up deciding to discard um, the very powerful combat effect Daylight because the card did had no effect. So we continue on. He... Um, he gets his dice properly and uh, allocates one eye, and uh, we decide to just roll. He had only rolled one, but there we go. So we got no extra eyes. This is another great roll for me. Uh, gives me a chance to get Gandalf, but you know, m maybe now this is a good argument for having lost Gandalf previously. That maybe that would have been wise, and I could bring Gandalf back here. And, and bring him to Erebor. This it, that that could have been that could have been a mistake. Um, I think because I had Legolas out of the Fellowship, I felt like the Fellowship was a. I was a little wary about running too low on corruption, and therefore I didn't want to lose Gandalf to a one. But if I had kept Legolas in, maybe maybe that was poor. Uh, there, there were sort of cascading effects as a result of taking Legolas out of the beginning. All right, so um, I go ahead and hide the Fellowship. That's pretty clear. He plays Candles of Corpses, makes sense. Um, and uh, does two Corruption, which is good. 
and I go ahead and move. And he misses, which is predictable, um, given that he only had one die. Uh, we're getting the Easterlings to war. He's finally moving that, that army in. And that second muster, I wonder, maybe it's better to start to threaten a day without dawn. But I don't know. If you're attacking Rohan, it's, it's also good to upgrade that. So that's, that's very reasonable. Um, so he's attacking Fords of Eisen. And I have not managed to draw scouts. So, you know, I've drawn five, five um, uh, army cards, army muster cards, and there are three scouts in the deck. So the chances, I think, with five cards, that's roughly, I think, 50%. Um, we would need to do 21 divided by 24 times 20 divided by 23 times, I don't know if it's worth doing this now, but uh, 19 divided by 22 times 18 divided by 21 times 17 divided by 20. Yeah, so my chances of not having scouts right now, it's about 50%, 50-50. So I, but I don't have it. And, you know, it's disappointing if he's not playing a card, I could have re retreated these units in. It's, it's tricky to know what to, what to play here. If I had saved daylight, I could have played daylight here, but instead I play no card. Uh, and he manages to defeat them. Uh, and now Helm's Deep is going to be taken very easily. If I had gotten these, these armies from Edoras to Westamnet, I could move them in and make Helm's Deep much more defensible, but I failed to do that. This is, this is, this is great for him. I wonder, th this is a good point of reflection to think about. As free people, are there ways for you to get Helm's Deep uh, better defended? It's always a shame for, for free if, the, if a stronghold is taken with only a single unit. So I send Gimli off. Um, maybe, maybe this is right. Um, I get all the way to, uh, Woodland Realm, I heal a corruption and, um, I'm going to get to play Book of Marzable so that I can start to prepare the dwarves for war. I'm thinking at this point, maybe I should go more for military. Um, I don't really commit to that fully yet because I didn't take everybody out, but, uh, Gandalf and the Hobbits obviously will, will stick around. All right, so there's the healing. I draw an extra card because of um, Gandalf. And um, we continue along. So he attacks Helm's Deep. They go into Siege. I move. Um, and now Gandalf uh, dies very fitting, fittingly to a three. That's really the ideal uh, way to kill off Gandalf. So he goes. Um, Maybe there's some argument for using rings on this turn um, so that I could just, he only has one eye, I could keep making more progress. If he does uh, manage to um, hit me and I lose Gandalf exactly like what just happened, then I can bring Gandalf in while I have the Will of the West. So maybe something, something that I could have considered doing. Um, I tend to try and conserve my rings when possible. Um, he goes ahead and defeats Helm's Deep pretty easily. And um, at this point, instead of bringing the dwarves to war, which I don't think is as much a rush, I muster in, um, I muster in Edoras while I have that muster there. So I end up um, having a bunch of extra cards. That's one of the drawbacks of having Gandalf. I mean, it's good and it's bad. Um, Axe and Bow is obviously an easy discard since I no longer have Gimli or Legolas in the Fellowship and Mighty Attack. Not that useful at this point in the game. I don't know what what is the other card that you would consider discarding out of this. Um, I ended up discarding Imrahil of Dol, Dol Amroth because uh, Gondor's already at war, and so I can just muster there with a regular muster. And I'm running relatively low on um, Gondor elite units because I want to use one for um, House of Stewards, which is going to get me an elite with Boromir. So I think, okay, I don't really... I don't really need that. The benefit, obviously, is it allows you to muster with a Palantir action instead of a muster action, so it gives you more flexibility with your dice results. 
All right, but that's what I end up discarding, Axenbo and um, Immerhoff Dual Analog. All right, um, I go ahead and declare, which um, declaring here, as we'll see, it stops um, the cards that require the Fellowship to not be in a settlement because this is actually a settlement. So therefore he won't be able to play things like um, Foul Thing from the Deep. All right, um, he allocates two eyes I'm not sure why it's worth allocating two eyes at this point. Um, you know, the fellowship is pretty far away. It's pretty well corrupted. Um, I think the risk of allocating too many eyes is that you slow down, you slow down your military and it just doesn't increase your chances of getting, um, getting the, getting hits that much. And also particularly in a turn where I don't have Gandalf yet, Probably, if I manage to roll a Will of the West, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recruit Gandalf. And so that's one fewer um, fellowship movement that's going to happen this particular turn, because you know I'm going to try and get Gandalf if I can. All right, so he ends up with three eyes. I roll, and I do get a Will of the West right away. Um, I don't need to use it because um, all of his factions aren't at war yet, so there's no risk of Day Without Dawn, which could clear it. All right, I go ahead and move. And even with three eyes, it's still relatively uh, not the best chances that he's going to hit me. I think it's, I don't remember exactly what it is with three dice rolling, trying to hit a six. I think it's maybe 60% uh, chance to miss. So better odds to stay to stay hidden than I do. Um, all right, he tries to play foul thing. We already discussed that. That's not possible. He ends up moving armies. I muster in Dol Amroth while I have the chance. And this is exactly the situation. If he does have Corsairs, because it seems like maybe he's preparing Corsairs. Um, if he does have Corsairs, it sure would be nice to be able to use one of these Palantirs to be able to muster there. So maybe this was a mistake for me to discard it. I don't know what would have been better to discard instead, um, perhaps through a day and a night, as maybe it's not that useful. I had ambitions for a military victory, so I was excited to hold on to it, but um, maybe that would have been a better choice. All right, so I go ahead and muster. He, um, yeah, it's good to play those cards, obviously. The, the Hunt Tiles, I get uh, Gandalf because what else am I going to do for sure? Um, good to threaten some Ents. I don't have any Ents in hand, but good to threaten it. So Orthanc stays contained. Um, he plays Rage of the Dunling, Dunlandings to go up north. Now, I'm not really scared of this. It, it seems unlikely that he's going to be able to get to Rivendell um, with these results. He might be able to. Um, obviously, uh, it would be good to muster in there to make sure it's harder for him to take it. Those five regulars um, might be able to take two elites, but they certainly shouldn't be able to take three. Um, all right. Now, it is a little risky to play Mithril Coat and Sting before Nazgul strike has been played because Nazgul strike can get rid of Mithril Coat and Sting if the fellowship has not been declared in on Mount Doom yet. Um, but my hand is pretty full and I don't know what else would be useful to be doing with these Palantirs. And so, you know, again, maybe should have kept Imrahil of Dol Amroth. Um, he's moving relatively slowly from a military perspective He's gotten four victory points here. I think Edoras will be a little tricky for him to take. Um, it does look like Corsairs could take Dol Amroth relatively easily if he does that soon. Um, it's not totally clear. Maybe he's going to try and take Rivendell, but that force of five is a little tough. So I do have some time. Um, so go ahead and play that. All right. Um, he moves Nazgul. And, you know, I don't... I don't love this. I'm not sure why he's moving Nazgul instead of just making progress with this with this army and and moving it in here to be able to start to wear down um, Aragorn Boromir. He could maybe put me under siege at some point eventually, um, or go somewhere else. This this just doesn't. It, I don't know that they're doing that much right there. I think getting it on the fellowship. Yeah, that's that's fine. Um, all right, what else to do? Go ahead and play Book of Marzabal to get the dwarves to war. And I bring Gandalf to Minas Tirith so that these uh, Nazgul don't do any useful, uh, anything useful for um, leadership. 
It does mean that I can't play Ents right now, but since I don't have any in my hand right now, it's not really a big concern. Okay, he goes ahead and uh, merges, merges this army. And what else does he do? Oh, and starts to bring in some, some additional troops here. Now, I guess he's worried about a military attack, and so he's leaving a lot of, a lot of units home. That's okay. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that's totally crazy. I might have brought a few more along. Just if your plan is, I mean, what, what else are these units doing if not eventually attacking Minas Tirith? And so eventually you're, you wouldn't expect to take Minas Tirith without having to reinforce this a bit. So I would, I would tend to bring more along, but that's interesting. Okay, I now have six dice. Uh, Path of the Wozes while um, Rohan is at war. Rohan should be at war and I realize it now. Um, while Rohan is at war is obviously quite flexible. It gives me a lot of options to, to make some sort of military attack. Um, all right, I declare the fellowship because um, I don't know that he has Falthing from a Deep and I avoid the reroll of the Witch King. So maybe it's not bad he managed to get me to declare out of there. Um, he allocates two eyes again. I just don't know if that's worth it. Um, you know, I get a bunch, I get a bunch of um, uh, character dice, so I am going to end up moving. So it's not, it's not crazy. He misses, though, even with four dice, which I think is close to 50-50. And then plays Foul Thing from the Deep and gets <clears throat> a three. So at this point, um, I separate both hobbits and um, reveal with Gollum. So I don't take any corruption because I'm using guide abilities. And there's no random casualties to take at the time you get to that point in the hunt sequence. Uh, because I used hobbit guide ability, hobbit guide ability, Gollum guide ability, no random casualty to take. I think that was the correct way of resolving it. And then I go ahead and hide. So he moves armies. And for some reason, um, I, completely, I completely missed that he uh, had this army next to Rivendell. Um, I, just, I just noticed this movement. I think there was a lot of things going on that were distracting me uh, in my uh, house, I think, at that, at that particular moment. Um, I think the correct play is clearly to use this muster die um, to muster in Rivendell because there's no there's no reason if he's if he's trying to attack Rivendell, um, you know maybe eventually he's going to reinforce it, but uh, there's no reason not to. And and if he attacks from Osgiliath into Minas Tirith, I'm just going to stay and fight. He doesn't have any leadership. I have tons of I have I have tons of leadership, um, and I, I think that would not be a very uh, good fight for him. I could play a bunch of things like Great Company. So um, yeah, that's this is just a mistake. Um, and then he attacks Rivendell. So I missed it. And uh, that's unfortunate. I think it's good to um, it's good to pay attention. <laughs> you have to pay attention if you miss things like that. Uh, that can that can be bad. So I'm still feeling a little hopeful that Rivendell can, can hold um, these two elites against five regulars. But if he has a reinforcement card at some point, um, it's, it's looking a lot less hopeful. There's no reason not to have gotten another um, elite in there before, before he arrives with five regulars marching up there very slowly. <clears throat> and unless he does have a lot of reinforcements in his hand, I think, I think it would make a lot of sense to have reinforced that more. He got, I think he got kind of lucky that that, um, that, that worked. He, he has, um, you know, dreadful spells. So dreadful spells will be able to help uh, soften it up. That's, that's a possibility. Um, okay, so uh, I reinforce um, the Woodland Realm because maybe eventually these guys are coming. And I'm at this point cycling to try and get um, the Rivendell reinforced. Maybe there were other options to play there. Um, maybe it would have been better to play Eomer at that point. Uh, let's see. All right, so he moves Nazgul around again. Good to put it on the Fellowship. And I play Eomer here. <clears throat> maybe I should have just used <clears throat> a regular muster, mustered normally here, and then saved Aomer for another card, for another turn. 
but I wanted to be able to have, um, I didn't want to waste cards because I knew that I had, I knew that I had a bunch of cards in my hand and I didn't want to feel like I was just throwing them away. I don't know. That's it's an interesting question. Um, all right. He goes ahead and shifts armies around. I don't understand that movement really. Uh, I don't think Far Harad is an important location to control. Uh, the North is really far away from war. If I ever take Angmar, it's easy enough, I think, to retake it at some point. And um, I think you would rather have these units closer to Umbar if you're actually worried about a military attack on Umbar. Though uh, it just feels... I don't know. I don't think I would leave two here. And I think moving two armies from Nern to Gorgoth, it's just, um, it's a really small, minor effect. I think I would tend to get these armies engaged somewhere, maybe to the Vale of um, Karnan. Maybe you're waiting to reinforce this more. Um, yeah, he has Corsairs of Umbar at this point. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe these guys can come out of Helm's Deep and start to deal with this. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just hard to find what to do with that army movement. Um, but I would tend to have a full a full army in Umbar before embarking on that attack. All right. Um, I play Bilbo's song here because what else am I going to do with that character die? I could move the Fellowship again, but he has four dice and a reroll. Uh, I think I'm not really at great risk uh, militarily, so I don't want to let him basically hit me automatically. I can I can go slowly with these character dice, so I heal. All right, Challenge of the King is great. Um, I love getting Challenge of the King while there are still a bunch of eyes in the pool. This is this is really a great time for Challenge of the King, and uh, it will help Gollum move more smoothly. So I haven't really gone full military. He's at four victory points already. And so I think doing an all-out military attack um, would require me to leave some points defended. Maybe I could combine this Rohan army with half of this Minas Tirith army and, and then go give him this one point in Edoras and then go terrorize the land. Um, I'm certainly thinking about that. It's getting close to the time where that should be possible. This... Um, this army in Dol Golder is a little weak. Um, Moria is obviously undefended. Um, elves and dwarves are at war, though, with this army sitting right here. I'm not sure that I want to vacate these. Um, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking like part of this army and this army is going to merge up and then go do something and then go do something awesome. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, he wants to allocate two eyes, but can only allocate one because of Gollum. And um, I get this amazing role. So, you know, this is certainly a moment where, uh, you know, earlier in the game we saw that I discarded Immerhill of Dol Amroth thinking that I had, um, you know, Gondor was at war so I could just use a regular muster for it, but I had extra Palantirs. Um, and again, last turn I used a regular muster on, um, in... I used a muster to play Aomer when I could have just done a regular muster then and saved Aomer for this turn if I had Palantirs. So the thing about cards is that they give you a lot of flexibility um, if you have the Palantir, if you have Palantir results, it gives you it gives you some options if you have cards that you want to play. So this is a this is a pretty tough situation for me. Um, clearly I'm gonna move once. But then what am I going to do with five Palantirs? Um, you know, Challenge of the King is clearly one. Um, but then it's just not, it's just not clear what else, what else to do here. Um, maybe I end up drawing cards and, and, and wasting them. All right, so let's see what happens. So I pass. He musters. He tries to muster the mouth. That's obviously not allowed. Um, he gets uh, Southrons and Easterlings to war. And I play Challenge of the King. I get... Um, the perfect result, right? Two eyes is exactly what you want. Um, I, I, I wasn't too worried about Aragorn being killed, um, but at this point in the game, I felt like it was worth uh, whatever small risk that was, and I get two eyes, so that's that's really perfect. 
Um, he plays Orc Patrol and amazingly manages to draw <laughs> another eye, even though there are only two eyes in the whole pool. So that's, that's, quite, um, that's quite unlucky for him. Uh, but that eye goes here. We put any tiles that should go into the pool uh, right there. All right, so I play the Grey Company just to draw more cards. Uh, I can't actually get an elite into uh, Minas Tirith because I've mustered all of the Gondor elites. But you can choose, if you don't have an elite uh, for this card, you do not eliminate a regular. Uh, you just uh, ignore this whole first part and you draw two cards, at least according to the FAQ. So that's what happens. I draw two strategy cards. Maybe I should have drawn one character card instead, but it felt like one Palantir for two cards uh, seemed worth it. So that's what I did. I draw Dane Ironfoot's guard, great card to draw at this point, and scouts finally um, have the first scouts of the game which at this point is probably a little less useful, um, but I always like having scouts as an option. So uh, that's good. He uh, plays Dreadful Spells as planned and gets one hit. Um, and now I'm really feeling shaky. He could really take out these three, these three units with, with these guys. Um, I play Dan Ironfoot's guard. What else am I gonna do with my Palantirs? He goes ahead and musters. That seems very reasonable, getting more units uh, where they need to be. And uh, I draw a card, last battle. Maybe at this point I should have been drawing character cards. Um, I have a lot of, <laughs> you can see I have uh, five army cards in my hand right now. Um, I don't really have anything playable. I th I, I, the reason why I didn't draw a character card is because I felt like there were gonna be quite a few unplayable character cards. Um, all of the Ents would be pretty useless at this point. Um, I felt like I was more likely to get a useful, um, a useful character card. I mean, a useful, a useful army card. So that's why I drew an army card though. Maybe it was turned out poorly. Who knows? I mean, daylight's still a very good, uh, combat effect. All right. So he goes ahead and plays the fighting archive. This, uh, means basically the death of, of Rivendell. There's no way that they're going to be able to survive. I could have, I could have played daylight, could have played shield wall, um, those are both great combat cards. So Fighting Urkai is a great, great play on his part. It's going to give him a good chance to take out Rivendell. And he rolls um, four sixes. So it's always good to roll sixes. It's a good strategy. And, um, you know, you give yourself the chances. I, I follow that strategy also. Um, you know, if I had another Elven Elite there, I would be left with a single regular at this point, which I still would not be enough um, to hold it. So... You know, maybe it ended up okay that I didn't uh, end up uh, recruiting more in um, Rivendell. It didn't really change the outcome of the game, but um, but I still should have done it because in most cases that would make that certainly would make a difference. All right, so he's up to six victory points now. Um, I think looking around the board, it's hard to know exactly where those points are going to come from. Um, you know, Woodland Realm can be pretty sol solidly defended. Uh, I have plenty of units in the Elven Pool. Um, Minas Tirith, obviously, no. Uh, Grey Havens, you know, Grey Havens and Shire, maybe. He could be thinking about four, the four cities at this point. Um, but Edoras is not going to be that easy for him to take with this army, and he risks a counterattack um, recapturing Helm's Deep. So... Even though he's at six, I think it's hard to imagine exactly where those other points are coming from. So I go ahead and move the Fellowship. Um, unfortunately, he hits. Um, one damage, not that bad. I decide to reveal Golem uh, because I need to keep um, I need to keep threat down, uh, corruption down. But um, you know, maybe maybe that was a bad choice. Um, he doesn't have anything to hurt me too bad about that. And then he goes ahead and plays Corsairs before I manage to get another unit um, in Dol Amroth. So again, I'm feeling pretty dumb for discarding Immerhill of Dol Amroth. And now I play what I think is probably um, my my biggest mistake of the game. Um, I play through in a day through a day and a night now. Um, also revealed Path of Woes. Uh, to bring this army here. And so I guess I'm thinking at this point, let's go ahead and merge up these armies and do something and do something awesome with them. Um, you don't really want to play through a day and a night at the very beginning of your sort of 
military adventure. You want to play it to surprise something, to attack something undefended, you know, get the army to Eastham net and then play it at that point to either go towards Moria or go towards Orthanc, whichever is going to be the better target. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. I, I just think there wasn't a great, a great play. Um, maybe I should have just drawn a card, just draw an extra card. Even when you have seven and even when you're about to have um, two more cards at the start of next turn, because you don't want to waste through a day and a night sending your army away from the big battle on Minas Tirith. Because now, um, you know, Minas Tirith can fall now. Given, given what's in Osgiliath, that's, that, that's a decent enough army to be able to take out Minas Tirith. So, you know, I have Path of the Woeses. So I'm thinking maybe I'll come back at some point. Maybe he'll move out of Osgiliath into Minas Tirith and then I'll be able to jump back to Osgiliath and then go after Umbar or something like that. But um, I, just don't, I just don't think that makes sense. So I think this was a real mistake. It wasted, it wasted a card. It wasted time. It made Minas Tirith more vulnerable when that's a place that I really do need to be defending. So um, he goes ahead and plays Ringwraiths are abroad moves uh, to Dol Amroth and um, makes some progress. I get to play some combat cards here. So I wouldn't have ended up, I mean, I didn't know for sure that he was going to attack, um, but I wouldn't have ended up discarding cards in the end, as many, uh, because I can play some here. So um, I end up playing a bunch of cards anyway. And Dol Amroth manages to survive at least that initial attack. And um, we continue. So I get another uh, perfectly good roll. He gets another good roll. Um, I, th I don't know exactly why I draw a card there first instead of hiding the fellowship first. Um, I think maybe I wanted to try and get court, um, certain ships, I guess. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm thinking I'm going military, so I'm not going to worry about the fellowship right now. I'm just going to make some attacks. I have the will of the West and I have two character dice so I can go ahead and make some military attacks. So why, why worry about the fellowship right now? So maybe I'm thinking militarily. I don't remember exactly why. Um, he draws a character card, so he's still focused on the fellowship. And then I go ahead and hide. So I'm really not making up my mind here. Um, you know, there are only there's only one eye. He's not that close to um, you know succeeding. The other thing is, had I just drawn certain ships, uh, I could play it uh, and have just reinforced Dol Amroth. So I think it would have made more sense at that point if he doesn't have uh, some card to play. Like, why not go ahead? Oh, did he have Morgul Wound? So he had, he had Morgul Wound in hand, but then he drew a character card instead? That's a little confusing. If you're worried about the Fellowship, why not, why not play Morgul Wound to just wound them while I'm revealed instead of drawing a character card? Yeah, that's that's strange. That's that's a little surprising. Uh, if it were me and I were Shadow, I probably would not be too worried about the Fellowship right now because um, they're still three steps away. Um, I could potentially make it this turn with um, with a ring. I uh, I could move once uh, with the character, move once with the Will of the West, and then move a third time and could make it in. But I'm not in so much of a rush, I don't think. Um, and honestly, if I were in a rush, why am I, why am I drawing strategy cards? I, neither of us are really making up our mind about what, what, what we're going to do. All right. Uh, and then we had some problems with the Fellowship appearing flipped for me, and we ended up um, doing it backwards. And so um, just so everybody knows watching this game, the, the Fellowship is from now on in the game reversed from what it actually is. So it is hidden right now. 
we just had we just had a weird uh, bug here, and I played it so that he would uh, see it properly and I would see it incorrectly because I was a, a little more experienced player. Um, okay, so um, he says he, he's attacking Dol Amroth, um, and we play. So he plays Great Host. Obviously, playing Shield Wall against uh, Great Host doesn't make sense, but I pretend I don't know that he's going to play Great Host, so I, I play Shield Wall anyway. Um, and he gets one hit and then the great host gets the second hit. So, um, so that's good for him. Had I, you know, this, this is really an example of, uh, shadow doing a good job attacking where the fellow, the, the free peoples are weak, even when there are quite a few, um, nations at war, right? I have basically everyone at war except the North. I could have defended Dol Amroth better, um, but I, but I didn't. Um, and similarly with Helm's Deep, I could have defended Helm's Deep better um, if I had moved those armies in sooner. All right, so um, let's continue. Um, and now he's at eight. And so now I'm thinking this is, this is pretty tough. Um, maybe I need to rush a little bit and maybe Boromir can hold. Um, all right, so we, we go to uh, the Fellowship moving. Uh, it's safe, um, but the Nazgul hit it. Um, we get a zero, so that's obviously nice because of Gollum. And that's, that's just a beautiful balancing mechanic in this game. If the Fellowship is running close to the end, they get, they get some perks to balance it out. So that's good. And, you know, obviously I would prefer that that zero stayed in the pool. Um, if you look at the hunt pool, it's, you know, okay. Um, but it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to get there, um, all the way, especially with, uh, these eye tiles or these, uh, the red tiles. Okay. I'm going to have to reveal quite a lot to keep Gollum, uh, healthy. All right. So he drew another character card. He's really staying committed to the fellowship and then he attacks there. And now I do an amazing thing, which is I bring the, um, I bring the, <laughs> that army back. So they did through a day and a night, and then um, they did Path of the Roses back. Uh, so I wasted two good cards and two dice to do nothing. And maybe it's a mistake to play Path of the Roses here, uh, because like, why would I have played through a day and a night if I'm just going to play Path of the Roses to bring them back? And I think, I think the answer is, if you've made a mistake earlier in the game... Um, and you've realized your mistake, don't compound it by not fixing it. And so this was a chance to defend Minas Tirith. Had I not brought back Gandalf, um, this army certainly could take Minas Tirith, and then that's the game. So, so I need to bring this army here, and I need to be prepared to, um, to, fight, off, to fight off the Witch King. Um, you know, he's going to be able to take Pilar gear. That gets him to nine. But where is the where is the tenth point coming from? Edoras, maybe these guys could maybe take it, but I haven't played any Ent cards, so this is certainly a risk. Uh, I would be very risky to to try and do that. Um, maybe we could get um, maybe we could get Dale uh, if he had a ring, and if this right, he can do one attack here, and then he can do one movement and one attack. Um, but he's, he doesn't have quite enough dice to do that. Um, except for the fact that if I want to get into Mordor this round, which I do because now he's at eight victory points, um, I'm going to have to use a ring to do it. So, um, because remember I'm actually hidden and I'm, and I'm, I have one movement, so I just need one, two more movement to be able to make it there, I can move with this, I can use a ring for this. So he should be aware of that and thinking about what I'm hoping to do. And um, if I do that, then he can attack um, with his last action using a ring. Um, okay, so he goes ahead and musters um, there, which makes sense. And then he musters again. And so now, now that he's mustered, use that die to muster and not move. Um, I know that he can't. Um, I know that he can't win this turn. It's impossible for him to to win this turn unless he like 
attacks Minas Tirith and then I go into a siege and then he defeats it in one attack. But like, that's not, that's not happening. So um, I go ahead and so I don't know what's happening there. I, I, wow. I thought that I was going to use a ring, <laughs> but instead I guess I mustered there. I'm not sure what my plan is. I guess I was feeling really reluctant to use um, rings and didn't want to rush it. I felt like I still had time. Um, I don't know. Maybe I was still worried about him taking Dale somehow and I wasn't, I wasn't thinking that it would be impossible for him to win it at this point. So who knows? I don't, I'm not sure why I did that. I think the proper play is to move once with Gollum and then move again um, with a ring and then try and try and get lucky going up uh, Mount Doom. All right, he plays Isildur's Bane here and does two corruption. I can't reveal um, to save the corruption because of uh, Isildur's Bane. You have to take it as corruption. So that's what I do. Um, he, uh, with my movement, I muster. So what is my plan here? I guess my plan is, I if I have any hope, I need to... Uh, I need to retake some strongholds and not try and go up Mount Doom. I think that was probably wrong of me. Um, it's not so hard to take the cities that um, I'm going to be able to withstand it. So I, I'm not sure what's happening. I mustered a bunch in Erebor and now I have some super army there. Um, and I don't know why I mustered a regular because... If that army goes into siege, now I have six. That that regular is going to be wasted. Um, maybe I didn't have an elite to put into Rohan. No, I had an elite to put into Rohan. So I don't know what's going on. Um, I think there are a few mistakes there. It's a little inaccurate, I think, to, to get that extra regular in Erebor. Maybe these armies are going somewhere to some great attack, but this is too big of an army, and he's at eight victory points. I can't, I can't leave Erebor. Um, Maybe my plan is to move armies into Dale and then to reinforce, um, reinforce Woodland Realm, finally using these scouts. That's not, a, that's not a crazy plan. All right, let's see what happens. Um, he reinforces Umbar. Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, it makes sense certainly to uh, get these guys here. Um, sure, why not? Why not take Umbar? Um, control Umbar. These guys could have snuck in there at some point, so that makes sense. That's a good, perfectly good play. Um, and I think his plan is just leave these guys sitting right here at Helm's Deep. Um, he's going to let me keep uh, Edoras, and he's going to take uh, Pilar Gear and Dale for the win. I think that's a great plan, and there's not going to be that much I can do about it. All right, so obviously that's great timing for me to draw King Brand's men. Uh, that'll let me uh, retreat into Woodland Realm. And I guess my plan is to, when he takes Pilar gear, retake it with this army from uh, Minas Tirith. All right, so I declare the fellowship. Uh, remember, these guys are hidden. Um, I guess that gets me out of the Nazgul, and now he's less likely to uh, get to draw tiles, and I want to keep the pool very fresh. Um, I get a bunch of, just a bunch of... Um, movement, a lot of flexibility. I don't use a will of the West because I want to allow this for, um, combat or mustering. Um, and it's, it's obviously a little risky because if he has day without dawn, he can get two of my dice, which would be huge. Um, but, uh, I'll still be able to get the fellowship in. So it seemed like an okay risk. Uh, you know, it certainly is risky. Maybe I should have, maybe I should have used one but there aren't a lot of other cards that I'm really excited to play right now. All right. Um, I play King's Brandsman and I get certain ships. So, you know, obviously a little late on that, but he musters. I think that's fine. I don't know what else you're going to do. Might as well get more Nazgul. Seems fine. Um, at this point, I think, well, if he didn't play Day Without Dawn, he certainly doesn't have it. So I'll go ahead and keep those. I move. Um, he hits me, you know, so if he's going to hit you anyway, why not move last turn and be making your way up Mount Doom? Um, the one benefit is I could reveal. If I reveal, I'll be at three. Um, 
and if he has Morgul wound, then he, um, then he will uh, hit me. But I know last turn, I was revealed, uh, and he didn't play Morgul wound. So I'm thinking he, you know, the odds of him having drawn Morgul wound very recently is pretty low. Now, what I didn't know is he had it in hand, um, and he didn't, and he didn't play it then. So now he's going to have a chance to uh, play it on me. I reveal, this is actually revealed. Remember, this is opposite. I'm at three, exactly at three corruption. And, um, and then he plays Morgul Wound on me. So, you know, that's obviously uh, quite bad for me. I should have just stayed hidden um, and avoided the corruption from Morgul Wound and had an extra die to play with. So definitely a mistake. Um, I, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know, maybe not definitely a mistake, but um, I guess it's a good reminder that sometimes people make mistakes earlier in the game. And so even though he had Morgul Wound, he didn't play it. Um, and you shouldn't necessarily assume that you're, you know, you can't assume too much based on what you're, but based on your opponent's card play. Um, it's just generally a bad idea to reveal yourself to, to save, to save yourself going from three or four by revealing yourself and to stay at three, it just invites, it really invites more of a wound. And he's, and he's, you know, basically halfway through the character deck here. So, um, all right. So that was rough. Uh, the fellowship is now at five corruption. It's going to be really hard making it up, um, Mount Doom. You know, I typically think about, you know, if you enter with zero effective, zero corruption, you know, and the hunt pool is about, you know, average, then you, you, you know, you have a decent shot, but I'm going to be entering at five corruption at least. Uh, it's going to be pretty tough. So, so I hide and I've already played, I've already played Bilbo song. So, uh, there, and I don't have any blue tiles in the pool. It's, it's definitely looking bad for me. Um, all right. So he attacks Dale. Uh, I play scouts and retreat into woodland realm. All right, so Woodland Realm is obviously... I'm feeling good about both of these strongholds being able to withstand this. Um, but I obviously can't go ahead and, you know, do a military attack. Um, it's going to be pretty tough. All right, so he gets he gets a an eye on this movement. And I decide to use Mithril Coat and Sting because I am... Um, I'm just playing... To, to long odds of having to get really lucky, maybe I should, maybe I should save that um, Mithril Coat and Sting to avoid a red tile later if I even manage to get into Mordor. Um, but the reality is I have such low chances, I don't want to have to take um, an extra tile for, for being revealed into the stronghold. Now, maybe I should be worried about cruel weather, and so maybe it makes sense to just let myself get revealed and then know that I'm going to be safe from cruel weather. Um, so this is, this is tricky. I don't know. If he has Nazgul Search, uh, I mean Nazgul Strike, then I'm going to end up losing Mithril Coat and Sting anyway. So I don't know. I don't know what's best. I decide to use it and um, get a one. So I stay hidden. Um... It's the same. It's the same logic. I'm, I'm playing. I'm playing to get pretty lucky here that he doesn't have cruel weather. All right. Um, so he attacks Pilar Gear. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and um, then at this point, I have to. I guess I pass, but I but I know that I have to attack. Um, I have to defeat this army in Pilar gear to be able to recapture it. The other chance is to attack from here into Dale, but the chances of um, retaking that I think are much lower. Um, this army I think can retake um, retake that much more easily. All right. So what would have been nice? Uh, so you'll see what happens next. Maybe I shouldn't have passed. Maybe I should have. Maybe I should have acted right away because what he's able to do is um, get. Uh, capture Lamadon with these five units. And now, even if I inflict some damage, he's going to get to reinforce with these five. When before, if I had attacked before he had captured Lamadon, um, then I would have been able to push him back to West Herondor and his uh, armies would have been more separated. So I think there were some optimizations I could have done here. 
um, I do, I, I go ahead and attack and um, I'm able to make some progress and he, re and he retreats. And so now he has a big army and um, he goes ahead and prepares to, uh, he prepares to retake Minas Tirith. All right, but I live for another round. Um, we get into Mount Doom and it's, it's definitely looking bad for the fellowship. Um, so, um, what, what happened? Uh, let's just, let's just review. Sorry, I skipped that a little bit. Um, he attacked, oh, right. Because Gandalf, Gandalf defended. Um, but we're going to the next round. Hold on one second. So he, he retreats. This is getting to the end of last round. Sorry. I just want to see what happened with the, the first action. So we draw our cards. Um, I drew, I rolled four will of the West. So obviously if he has day without dawn, um, I'm just completely lost. Um, I reinforce in Gondor. Um, obviously Minas Tirith needs reinforcements cause I'm thinking he's going to attack from Osgiliath. Um, and then I go ahead and, uh, reinforce in, um, Edoras. What he doesn't do is attack Minas Tirith. I'm not sure why not. I think that it would have been easy when it only, when Minas Tirith only had two units in it. I think these four units probably could have taken Minas Tirith. Um, so I'm not sure why he didn't do that. Um, and then as we continue, uh, what, what does he do instead? Um, he attacks Woodland Realm. So I'm not sure why he's attacking Woodland Realm. I, I guess it's a, it's a pretty big army. Um, and I'm also not sure why he leaves three behind. I don't think it makes sense to leave three behind. I mean, maybe one, um, but certainly I don't understand three because he can make, he can make a big attack. He can make a big attack here. If he's going to try and win that, he'll, it'll take him up to 11. And if he loses Dale, then it's fine. So yeah, I, I wouldn't have left any behind in, in Dale, M maybe one. Okay. So, um, then I continue to, uh, I continue to muster in Minas Tirith because I, I only had two at that point. And so I've now, I mustered, sorry, I skipped past that kind of quickly. I mustered again in Minas Tirith. Now I think it's pretty safe. Three in a stronghold against four out is probably fine. And I go ahead and muster in um, Rohan because why not? And then, and then he's trying to attack in Woodland Realm, but he's not using um, Grand as the action card. He's using it as a combat card. Um, okay, so we can continue, we can continue with the combat. Um, why is Grand there? I don't remember exactly why Grand is there. Let's, uh, let's delete it. Okay. So maybe I missed exactly what happened with Grand or where, where that went there, but he did not, he did not play Grand as the, as the combat effect, uh, as the card effect. Um, okay. So at this point, um, I'm not sure what's happening with Grand. Sorry, everyone. Um, all right. So I move, um, he draws a two, uh, I take one corruption and reveal myself and, um, he's attacking more than Rome. All right, so I don't play any cards. Um, maybe I should have played Daring Defiance there. Maybe I should have played Heroic Death. I'm not sure. Um, he definitely had some options for how to take this. I, I think Minas Tirith was probably the easiest way um, because if I come back to try and recapture Minas Tirith, then he can take, um, he can take Pilar gear, but... All right, so he tries to capture uh, Woodland Realm. Uh, he, we're both taking some casualties. And um, he continues, I play Heroic Death here and um, manage to survive with uh, uh, three units. And then 
I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. I think I'm just trying to stall. Um, and I'm going to try and throw this army. Um, I, no, I think about it. But I'm like, no, that doesn't make any sense. Um, and instead I draw a card. So at this point, I'm just hoping that, um, that this army in Woodland Realm is going to hold against this army. And therefore, I spend these dice to draw cards because otherwise, um, I just have no chance going up Mount Doom unless I get pretty lucky and need something in the hunt pool. I mean, this is just, this is not going to cut it for the fellowship making it there at seven corruption. So I need to get some blue tiles in there and then I need to get lucky with drawing them. So that's my current plan. And I also need this to hold. So it's definitely looking rough for the fellowship. Um, so he does have a reinforcement card, and now it seems very unlikely for Woodland Realm to hold. Um, I move again right here because um, I figure I need to have... Uh, I'm probably going to roll a Palantir next time. And so I can use that Palantir to play this card, and then I can move three times and theoretically win. Right. So it's, it's again, super low odds, but, but maybe possible. So that's, that's my current plan. Um, so he goes ahead and attacks Woodland Realm. I cancel his card, but um, he is able to win. So he rolls um, several, several sixes and is able to um, capture Woodland Realm, which puts him up to 11. And maybe, you know, I should have prolonged it more by sending this army out to wither, w Withered Heath and then being prepared to counterattack it instead of drawing, drawing a card and moving. Uh, but it was so, it was so tough, uh, you know, luck-wise anyway, that to have any hope of winning, I just, I went for it that way. So that's the game. Hope you enjoyed it.